Hello and welcome to the first episode of The Good Gram Show for 2021 with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, okay, um, so yeah, uh, here we go again, lockdown number, is it number three I think? Um, yeah, so uh, a quick um, a quick bit of, of, of information I suppose. Um, basically we'll be doing exactly what we were doing in, uh, in November. So we will obviously have, the shop will be open but it will be only open uh, to serve customers from the doorway, we will certainly be doing deliveries and click and collect. So, um, if you've run dry over the, the the festive period and need a top up, fear not, we will be open and um, we will be able to um, supply you, so to speak. So, um, a big thank you to everybody who watched uh, the last episode of the show, commented. A big thank you to all uh, all the the merry Christmases and happy New Years and all that kind of stuff. I hope you had a uh, a good festive period and uh, in, enjoyed some some good grams. Um, so this week uh, I thought it would be nice to kick off the year with some relatively new releases, certainly some uh, samples that uh, kindly came my way in uh, in December, so a big thank you to A.D. Rackray for um, most of uh, the samples. Obviously as you can see um, I kind of um, I had to have a bottle of this, uh, but we, and as you can see not an awful lot left in it. Um, kind of been enjoying it over the festive period, nothing like a bit of peat for Christmas is there. Um, anyway, so uh, I guess, you know, not pretty much, uh, not, not a lot to say about AD Rattray. I've done several episodes of the show over the years on, on them, um, obviously um, less of recent as they don't seem to be releasing quite so much in the UK as what they have done in the past said that before um, but um, you know it's always uh, I always look forward to their releases um, and um, obviously this set of releases that came my way in December was uh, you know no, no different to that so um, I, like I said not really a great deal to say uh, other than uh, let's uh, have a look at today's month. Right, okay so the first bottling we'll be looking at is an eight-year-old Dal Ewan uh, this was uh, distilled in 2011, November 2011, bottled in September of last year. Uh, it's a first fill bourbon barrel, uh, 800470 and bottled at 57.2%. Uh, next bottling we're looking at is uh, a 10 year old Linkwood. Um, again, this is Bourbon, uh, Bourbon Hoggy this time, number 199, uh, distilled in September of 2010, bottled September of last year, and bottled at uh, the ooh, not inconsiderable ABV of 60.7%. <sighs> Yeah, it's nothing like kicking off the new year with a bit of uh, a bit of alcohol, is there? Um, <laughs> anyway, so moving on to the third bottling we're looking at today. This is a 13-year-old Macduff. Um, is it going to Macduff my palate up? Mm, good question. Uh, so this is, uh, like I said, 13-year-old distilled in October of 2006, bottled in September of 2020. Uh, it's a single bourbon barrel, 101740, bottled at 55.1%. You may notice the lack of sherry. Um, Mm. Anyway, so moving swiftly on, uh, this is uh, an 18 year old Kragalaki, uh, distilled in September of 2002, bottled in September of 2020, and uh, it's a uh, single bourbon hogshead number 5, bottled at 55.5%. And the last bottling we'll be looking at, uh, well, of, that, of the sort of the new stuff, sort of, so to speak, uh, is in the vintage cask collection. This is a 28-year-old Dalmore. Uh, again, bourbon barrel, so that could be really interesting. Barrel number 1758, distilled in May of 1992, bottled in September of 2020 at 45.1%. And as I always like to finish on a bit of peak, we'll be looking at this baby. This is the recently released um, Cask Isla Cask Strength Bourbon Edition. 
try saying that after you've had a few of those. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, like I said, it's a limited edition version of uh, of the Cask Isla. Uh, I think first fill bourbon, um, 58.6%, uh, and it was bottled in June of 2020. So um, as you can see, I've um, ooh, pretty much demolished most of that bottle since, uh, oh, not since, uh, ooh, well, we won't say any more about that, will we? Mm. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's today's lineup. Let's kick off with uh, a bit of Darren Ewan. Okay, so first fill bourbon dalyon. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Right, it's quite tight. Um, I'm certainly getting plenty of the alcohol. Um, it's it's one of those kind of crowd pleasing noses that uh, that you often tend to come across. There's a large chunk of of creamy first fill bourbon yolk. It's a it's a a bit of not quite an oak monster because um, there is um, there is an element of the spirit character. It's um, obviously for those of you that know Dalu and it's changed its characteristics over the years. I think um, certainly the the last major change was 2007 when they basically I think uh, stripped out the old stainless steel condensers and replaced them with um, uh, copper ones and tweaked uh, the, the sort of fermentation time, distillation times to create what is now considered a more um, classical spay character, sort of citric grassy and this certainly certainly displays that. It's got some lovely barley as well. Um, I think I'm right in saying that they've again tweaked things um, to make a, 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 I think because Diageo wanted a slightly more Kleinelish style of waxy um, spirit but I've not tasted any of that as yet. I think that was a, that would, must have been around about sort of, I don't know, 2012, 15, something of that ilk, certainly after this uh, had been distilled. And um, like I said, there's a lot of oak um, but I think it's, it's balanced. I mean it is just, like I said, sort of edging towards the, the uh, sort of oak territory but I'm certainly getting the citrus, the grass, uh, a little bit of barley, a little bit of white fruit so it's kind of, yeah, it's bounced up and it's a, I think it's a pleasant nose. Let's see what the pulse like. Again, it's quite tight, it's quite barley, that alcohol is pretty intense, it has to be said, and it's kind of keeping the oak uh, in check, although you can certainly taste that lovely creamy vanilla, sort of slightly bourbon-y kind of character. Um, it's got quite a masked finish, but the citrus and the sort of the grassiness certainly comes through on the aftertaste. I mean, it is it's pretty intense stuff, it has to be said, and I think it's going to sort of certainly need a little drop of water uh, to kind of just kind of edge off the uh, uh, the alcohol. And uh, let's see what the nose is like now. It's suppressed the oak a little bit more, so I'm getting a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of the citrus. I'm getting a little bit more of the barley, the white fruit, and that's a lovely nose. It's a lovely. You know, typical spay, I guess. Um, it's kind of got that sort of crisp citric character, but there is a, a bit of fullness to it, a bit of barley character. So it's kind of sitting between the sort of the, the two um, points in the sort of spay side spectrum, shall we say? And yeah, that's that's lovely. It's aromatic. It's it's a, a lovely nose, and you know, I, I bought it, put it on the shelf. We still have some in stock at the moment. It's about. 50 something quid. Um, let's see what it feels like. Definitely emphasise the barley, the fruit. It's a little grippiness to the oak right on the finish. It's a little dry. Um, but I think there's plenty of juicy, juicy fruit notes and 
um, and barley uh, to just you know to, to balance that up and it's a nice kind of a, I won't quite go as far as saying aperitif malt but it's certainly a nice kind of starter if you you know fancy a couple of drams in the evening and you want to sort of start off with um, something that's a bit lighter and a bit sort of um, you know not so heavy um that's certainly a really nice one to start off with so uh, so yeah i thought that was really an impressive cask so <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the 10 year old liquid. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Dense, chunky, um, thick slabs of malt and barley and oiliness. Um, it really is quite a, I wouldn't quite go as far as saying impenetrable, but it's certainly sort of uh, edging into that, that direction. Um, it's got some white fruit, some, some pepper, um, it's got a, an almost kind of pulp and garve-ish sort of uh, character. Um, it's a little bit of a little bit of manure possibly, a little bit of a sort of mari sort of spirit notes. It's a bit, I wouldn't quite say raw, um, but it's kind of it's a little on the young side, even though it's it's ten years old. Um, and considering this is 60 odd percent, I'm not getting a huge nose of alcohol. Um, it's really well contained, which is um, a bit dangerous, you could say. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's an interesting nose. I mean, it's it's kind of, you know, it is classically sort of liquid, isn't it, really? Um, and g given the, the amount of liquid you tend to find that's been blasted with sherry, it's good to sort of see the distillery character. Um, so let's uh, see what that's like. It's a bit hard, um, almost industrial, it's hard as nails, barley it has to be said, slight faintiness, a bit on the young side it has to be said, the, the, the alcohol is certainly masking the finish, there's a little bit of barley, there's a little bit of fruit but that really does need a little drop of water so uh, we're going to put a little drop of water with it and see if that kind of opens things out because that's a a little bit on the on the industrial side, uh, shall we say? Um, okay, so the nose has freshened up a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of um, citrus. I'm getting some sort of almost kind of perfumed white flowers. Um, the it's not it, not quite so chunky, not quite so leaden. Um, the oak is certainly sort of pushed back a little bit, and it's just, like I said. It's, Got a little bit more freshness to the to the nose. Let's see what passes on there. It's a little homogenous, it has to be said. Now, I mean, yes, it's, it's the, again the oak is slightly sort of dropped off, um, as has the alcohol. So it's not quite so sort of like. Um, raw and industrial. Um, it's got some pleasant fruit, but it's it it kind of lacks a little bit of of of, it, of complexity. It has to be said. Um, I'm guessing sort of like this is probably going to be somewhere in the range of sixty to seventy quid. And although it's not not a poor bottling, it's just I don't think it's I wouldn't feel comfortable trying to sell that at that kind of price. I just don't think it kind of has the complexity. It probably could have done with maybe another year or two just to take that sort of like um, edge off the uh, A, the alcohol and B, um, a slight sort of uh, you know hardness, shall we say. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the Macduff. Now, <laughs> Macduff it has a, a reputation, shall we say. So, um, let's see what the nose gives us on this end. Well, you can't say that it doesn't have a um, distillery character. It's not as rough and as raw and as, as kind of dreadful as some Macduffs, it has to be said. Um, but it is slightly industrial. There's some barley, there's a, some white fruit, gooseberry, um, a little bit of buttery oak but it's got that edge to it and the sort of 
the gooseberry kind of green fruit notes are kind of emphasizing that kind of uh, that edginess to it um so i mean all in all i mean it's a clean nose i mean you know mcduff has a tendency to be a little bit on the dirty side it has to be said so um i guess from that kind of perspective it is it's it's actually quite good you know you are getting distillery character no doubt about that um but it's not sort of like too too raw shall we say um yeah let's see what passes out touch more oak on the palate it gives it a little bit more of a fuller feeling um Again, slightly industrial barley, it's got a hardness to it, there's a touch of lime, some toffee, a little bit of an austere finish, um, has to be said, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of spice. Um, yeah, so I guess you could say from a sort of like a, knowing the, the, the character of the distillery, this is actually not a bad barrel, it has to be said, it displays the distillery character but not as much as you you might have got you know um so it's kind of like it's it's not not bad at all it's not too bad um whether i, I don't know what it retails for i mean 13 years old and we're probably now getting somewhere into the sort of the the 80s i would imagine um see what the water does to it um it's a little bit of rose petal, is it not quite mar, it's more kind of like rose water, um, although not quite as, as rosy as, uh, <laughs> rosy, technical term, as, as say something like Ockentoshan. Um It's a little bit of a, a dustiness, it's sort of, you know, um, a touch more pepper, a touch more spice. Um, it's not a style that I... I really, really warm to. Uh, I think if you're going to have, you know, those kind of distilleries that produce that slightly more industrial style, really need some sort of honeyed sweetness or something like that. Um, and uh, this doesn't have it. But like I said, you're getting the distillery character, so you can't argue with typicity, should we say? Um, let's see what the palate's like. It's a little vague, it's a little watery, it's a little neither here nor there really at the end of the day. Certainly I think if you were going to buy this and you were going to drink it, I would, I would drink it neat because it's certainly got a lot more character um, when it's neat, uh, it has to be said. Um, and um, it's, like I said, it's not really taken uh, dilution particularly well. Um, but like I said, it is a Macduff and by Macduff standards, that's not too shabby. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Craigalaki. So, 18 years old, let's see what they give us on this then, shall we? That's not too shabby for a Craigalaki. Um, now, I mean, Craigalaki can be very, very variable, it has to be said. I mean, there is a, a little bit of a an edge to it, um, but it's almost tropical, which is... I can't say I've come across too many Craigalackies that have that kind of um, well, fruitiness, shall we say. It's quite barleyed again, peppery, a little bit of almost kind of pulped white fruit. Um, there's a bit of rose petal Turkish delight, um, chunky coffee. It's, it's not the most elegant of spirits, shall we say, but it's, again, it is not bad. It is, you know, like I said, it, it's... Got quite, I mean, the, you know, I suppose the sort of the, the earthy sort of rose petal notes are kind of coming through more strongly now. Um, but you know, give it once you give it some, give it a bit of aeration, and it certainly brings out the fruit. Um, now, again, I don't know what this is in. We're 18 years old. We're probably pushing about what 90 to something odd, uh, you know, probably edging onto a hundred round a bottle, I guess. Um, and again, it's the sort of style you've got to really like. 
And again, Craig Lackey, you know, I, I, it's not sort of a style I, I overly warm to, but again, you know, you have to say, plenty of distillery character and not too, not too raw, shall we say. Let's see what the palate's like. Doesn't feel 18, it's quite quite youthful, quite citric. It's going to that kind of Turkish delight note. It's kind of like sort of making it feel quite young. It's a bit short. Um, I'm checking my, my notes, you know, it's actually the retail, well, I'd retail it for about 87 quid. And I, mm, yeah, yeah, I'm not quite there, shall we say. Um, it's got a touch of gooseberry, a little bit of citrus on the finish. It's still a bit. Like I said, you know, it, you're never going to get away really from the sort of Craig Alaki kind of slightly uh, rough kind of industrial character. It's not as rough and industrial as some other malts, but it, do, it doesn't have the fruit that the nose displayed. And um, I'll put a little drop of water with it. I don't think it sort of re mm, um, really needed it, um, but... Um, I will we'll put a little drop of water with it and just see what kind of happens. Um, okay, it does make it feel a little bit more mature now. Um, there's some baked apple, some spice. A little bit more herbalness. It's got probably got a little less raw, shall we say, and it does feel more its age once you put a little drop of water with it. Um, it's kind of a little bit less less weird and wonderful, I suppose. Um, so it passes up. Softer, fuller now. Yep, yeah. you know it's it's kind of it certainly feels more like an eighteen year old malt. Now that I put a little drop of water with it, it's got a little bit more baked apple. Um, it's okay. It's pleasant, you know. And um, for me, you know, if I'm going to sort of try and sell you something for 80 odd quid, it's got to be a little bit more than pleasant. Um, but that's just me, you know. Uh, I mean, other people may well sort of say that's a stunning whiskey. I, I'm not going to say it's bad. It isn't. It's it's pleasant. Um, but you know, it's it, it's like everything at the end of the day. You know, it's all whenever you know I taste something, um, it's always a case of sort of like you know balancing the the sort of you know the complexity to the price at the end of the day. And certain whiskies that you know um, that are pleasant and and, and not yeah, and a good whiskies. But you know, you sort of like think well. Would I pick that at eighty odd pound a bottle rather than something else? You know, it's it's all a balancing act, and obviously some people will disagree with 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 valuations and say, well, it's not, you know, that's good value for money and all that kind of stuff. You know, so it's a very personal thing at the end of the day, and um, a bit of a touchy subject, really, isn't it, price? But you know, we're not going to go there. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the Dalmore, so 28 years old. Now, um, as you well know, Dalmore do not release any American oak aged, uh, or wholly American oak aged spirit, so it's always nice to come across it bought by the independents. And, you know, Dalmore can have a tendency to be a bit on the, um, the raw industrial side, um, which is obviously why they smother it in sherry, but anyway, um, let's see what those give us on this. That's a good nose, that's a pleasant nose. Um, sawdusty oak, it's obviously showing its maturity. There's a, some, quite a bit of oak in actual fact. It's got that sort of slightly rye-like kind of peppery, herbally spice note coming through. There's a little bit of almost mature tropical fruit. There's some marzipan. Um, it's a bit heavy on the oak, it has to be said. I'm not getting a great deal of... Of 
I mean, the thing is, with, with Dalmore, a little bit like McAllen to a certain extent, aged in American oak, sometimes you can just get these wonderful fruity um, casks. Other times, they're a little bit on the hard work. Um, and I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't say this is hard work, but I'm kind of trying to get beyond the oak. Um, and there is a little bit of lime, a little bit of gooseberry. It, you know, it is showing some sort of... A subtle highlandy kind of characters as a almost maybe a little bit of, of, of kind of heatheriness to it um, but like I said I'm, I'm kind of really trying to sort of get beyond the oak and, and the oak is very much in my face shall we say um, but it's got a lovely maturity to it so anyway let's see what the pass like Well, it kicks off with, with some lovely barley, some spice, um, a little bit of white fruit, but the oak kind of does come in quite quickly, and it's starting to bitter a bit on the finish. I mean, not unduly so. It's not an unpleasant bitterness. Um, there's a little bit of baked apple. There's some cinnamon. There's some, um, some pepper. It's lacking a little bit of sweetness, I would say. Um... And so the, the, the finish is a little on the austere side. Um, there's some pleasant maltiness to it. It's an interesting peer into a distillery's character um, that you wouldn't see from the distillery. Now, is it worth 240 odd quid? Um, that is a very, very good question. And it doesn't quite have enough. Um, I mean, it is a lovely whiskey, it has to be said. It is a, a unique whiskey that you just don't see of very much American oak age Dalmore at all. Um, I mean, I've come across a few. Uh, and it's, like I said, you know, you are paying a premium for that exclusivity. And it's, you know, this kind of price, it's really got to sort of, you know, blow my you know off um and it doesn't quite do that you know it is a it's a lovely whiskey it is really quite interesting but interesting to me is when i've got to put it on the shelf at sort of you know nearly 250 quid you know somebody's going to sort of say is you know what's it like is it really 250 quid and you you and if i can't really get behind it i'm not going to get behind it if you see what i mean um, other people may well disagree. It's like I say, it's interesting, but 250 quid interesting. I'm not quite so sure. Right, okay, so let's finish with a bit of peat, which is always a bit of fun. Um, so, like I said, this is the Cask Isla Cask Strength Bourbon Edition. Um, and yeah, I'm having trouble saying that, but anyway, let's see what the nose gives us, shall we? Oh, I don't know, that has got some intensity, it has to be said. I mean, it's it's herbal, it's phenolic, it's it's peaty, there's manure, there's char, there's bog myrtle, salt, earthy barley. I mean, it it screams Kalila at me, it has to be said, and, and we all well know that you can't go wrong with Kalila at the end of the day. Um, and underneath that, there's some lovely sweet, oil, slightly oily vanilla and some fruit. Um, and yes, it's it's quite oaky, it has to be said. I mean, obviously, most Kalilas you come across are aged in uh, refill casks um, because obviously the blenders want the spirit character rather than the oak. Um, so I don't know whether whether AD Rattray have re-racked this into first fill bourbon or not. Um, but it's certainly got it's got some intensity. Um, and um, oh, I love that. I mean, uh, that is really ticking all my boxes. And it's not particularly expensive either. I mean, what have I got on the shelf at? 40 something odd, you know. You know. Um, I, I, like I said, I've always been a fan of Carl Schuyler. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, like I said, you clearly you just you, you can't really go too far wrong. And um, mm, let's see what pass on. Like. 
sooty, earthy, cigar ash, peat, bit of bog myrtle, but again, underneath that is some lovely fruit, some lovely apricot, a little bit of salt, um, barley, oak as well, you know, but again, the sort of like the, the ABV is kind of just keeping that oak just in check, um, and so not allowing it to just sort of overpower the character of the spirit. Um, it's got a nice spicy finish and a little bit of pepper. Um, that's just a lovely isla. I mean, it has to be said, you know, you, I keep saying you can't go wrong with, with, with Kalila, and you certainly can't. Um, lovely intensity, lovely fruitiness, plenty of peat. I mean, you know, um, what more do you want? I mean, you know, uh, let's, uh, let's put a little drop of water with that and just uh, see what that does to it. Um, It's certainly brought out the vanillins, it's brought out the fruit, um, the sort of sweet white fruit, there's a little bit of toffee, a little bit of almost kind of white chocolate. Um, I mean it's softened it, I mean certainly it hasn't lost the intensity of peat, which sometimes when you put a little drop of water with cast strength um, islas, they do tend to lose the peat rather dramatically, and this has kind of retained it, which is quite good. Um, that's like certainly emphasize the oils, the sweet fruit, um, a little bit more spirit character, a little less oak, um, but it's really nicely balanced. I'm getting a slightly salty, quite peppery, um, sort of peaty finish. Again, the peat has, has kind of held up against being diluted, which is always a good sign. Um, tongue tingling, slightly salty finish. Um, mm, really lovely intensity. I mean, that is just a, a superb whiskey at the end of the day. You know, if you want to finish uh, your evening on a bit of a bit of a bit of a peat odyssey, then this just does the, the job. It's not hugely peated, um, but it's got enough peat, um, and it's got sort of like you know a really nice intensity, even with a little drop of water. So, um, so yeah, that's that's a really nice way to put. Right, okay, so. Uh, Let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, firstly, a big, big thank you to uh, A.D. Rattray for the bulk of the samples for today's episode of the show. The Dal Ewan, I thought, was really good. I mean, like I said, it's a bit of a crowd-pleasing nose. It's got lots of, of, of oak character, which is not a surprise, but it's balanced. You know, I'm getting enough of the, the distillery spirit character um, to sort of offset the oak, and, and I think that works really quite nicely. Um, the Linkwood I was less enamoured with, I mean, yes, you, you it, again, plenty of distillery character, but it, it just felt a little bit too young, um, even though it's like 10 years old, um, I thought it could have done with a little bit more time, just take off that sort of like, uh, that, oops, excuse me. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Firstly, a big, big thank you to uh, my good friends at uh, A.D. Rattray for the samples for today's episode of the show. I really appreciate that. Um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, they're not being too disappointed by uh, by, by my review. The Dalyun, I, I really like the Dalyun. Okay, it's, it's edging towards the oak territory, it has to be said, but I think there's enough balance there. It's, it's a very, like I said, it's a very crowd-pleasing nose. It's a sort of a lovely, slightly oaky, um, aromatic, um, but it's got enough balance there. I'm getting distillery character, and, and at the end of the day, you can't ask for more than that. Linkwood, again, you know, you can't, you can't dispute the fact that that displayed a good dollop of distillery character, but it just, it was a bit too young. Um, maybe a year or two more in the oak might have just, just, just taken away that slight sort of slight faintiness, that slight a sort of youthful element, um, and then maybe, you know, I'm not saying that sort of, you know, I mean, there are obvious pressures on independent bottlers to, to release stuff, I am aware of that, um, 
and maybe more so than in the past but you know I just a bit more time I think um, the McDuff again you can't argue that it had distillery character um, whether you like McDuff or not of course is a, sort of another matter but um, to me it's like I said it's not a style that I really warm to and you know if I'm going to put a McDuff or a Feta Ken or a Duff Town or a Jura or you know another you know another one of the axes of evil on the shelf then it really has to be amazingly good and um, it is what it is at the end of the day um, and to a certain extent you could say the same with the Craig Lackey um, I, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable enough you know saying this is really really worth 80 odd quid when there are other whiskies that I would kind of get behind I mean it's not bad whiskey like I said um, it had distillery character and I suppose you can't ask for any more than that um, and to a certain extent the same can be said for the Dalyuan um, not Dalyuan the, um, the Dalmore um, distillery character yes tick bit overly oaked, yeah, I'd get that. 250 odd quid, 248, 250 quid. Mm, no, it's gotta gotta do a lot more uh, a lot more work, shall we say, to sort of like warrant um that kind of price tag. I know that sort of you know the 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 AD Rattray are probably gonna disagree with my, my assessment of that particular bottling, but you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. And the car skyler. Um I've, I've stopped Cask Isla for, well, I, I think how long now they've been, they've been doing it and, um, you know, it's always been a consistently good bottling and this particular Bourbon Oak um, Cask Strength blah, 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 edition is, is pretty damn good at the end of the day. So, yeah, there you go. Um, another selection of really interesting uh, bottlings from AD Rattray. You know, if some of the ones that I'm not stocking kind of like sound like they your cup of tea you can certainly purchase them directly from ad rat tray the you know, the website address is in the in the box below as per usual um and um well that's the first episode of uh, of the show for 2021 i think it's a i think it's been a really intriguing one really interesting one and i hope you kind of like agree and um not really a great deal else to say apart from um stay safe um Use alcohol, <laughs> sanitise your hands with alcohol and um, drink the stuff as well. Uh, good tramming and good afternoon.